fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for the Rio Grande. Oh, Silver! Sheriff Wilson had been asleep for several hours before the door of his small house opened softly, then closed without a sound. The lawman's first consciousness was a feeling of someone shaking him gently by the shoulder. (laughs) What's this? Steady, Sheriff. I'm a friend. Who's here? Dead right it's the middle of the night. Who are you? Get wide awake before you try to talk, Sheriff Wilson. Uh, Where's the candle? Get a light in here. It'd be better if there is no light. Perhaps you don't want anyone to know that I came here. Well, who in blazes are you? I heard that you wanted to see me. A padre in a mission told me. Jumping gooseberries. Hold on now. Don't fool an old discouraged lawman. Don't do it. If you're not the man I think you are, don't josh me about it. I left Silver in back of your house. Tonto was there with him. Silver Tonto. Is it true that you need help here? You're the one. There's no mistake in that voice of yours. You're the Lone Ranger. Yes, Sheriff. Oh, heaven sent you. That's the truth. There's no two ways about it. Now, wait. Just let me get out of this bed and get my boots on. Why did you want to see me, Wilson? I'll tell you why. It's because there's more lawlessness than I can handle. More than any size posse I can get is able to handle. What kind of lawlessness, Sheriff? You're down right out and out killing, stealing, raiding, and whatever else there is. The Murdoch outfit takes what it wants and laughs at anyone that tries to fight him. Murdoch? Well, he's the brains of the gang, Butch Murdoch. He's got a headquarters that can stand an attack of a hundred men. And his headquarters is located where there's no law. Where is it? Between here and Mexico. It's an island in the river. I see. I've heard about that island. Neither the United States nor Mexico owns it. That's a story. And as long as Murdoch is there, he can't... Well, he can fight off any number of men. Uh, What is the island like? It's about three miles long and only about a quarter of a mile wide. It's all overgrown with brush. That gang always has good hiding when they have to shoot it out against men that try to attack them. Is the river deep around the island? Deep enough so a horse has to swim for it. That's why that gang can just hide in the shelter of the brush and pick off any number of men. They have to leave the island sometime. What happens when they're on the mainland? No one can tell where or when they'll strike next. As long as the place is on guard, they stay holed up on the island. When they attack at night, they hit a place that's unguarded. I see. How about the troopers? The army? Well, the island isn't in the state, so our troopers can't go there. It isn't in Mexico, so the Mexican army's in the same fix. They have plenty of supplies? Well, they stole enough to last them from now till doomsday. They steal money, gold, jewels, and that sort of thing, not bothering with big things like cattle or horses. Murdoch. The last time I heard of him, he was in jail. Well, he got out. He was not a jail two months before he had this gang organized. Wait, there's something going on. Sheriff! Sheriff! It's the Murdoch gang! Come in here! Yeah, I... 
town, aren't you, Sheriff? No, I'm not. What's that you're saying, Vern? Murdoch's gang? Oh, they hit the far side of town. They've already cleaned out the bank and the store. How many of them? Oh, looks to be half a hundred. Oh, they're coming this way and fast, too. Oh, they've started a couple of fires. Hey, look, too. look down there. Blazing building. Yeah. Like a tunnel. Tunnel. Bring the... Oh, oh, oh. Wilson, the masked man's been hit. Here, give me a hand. Hold it back in the house. Yeah. Get him in the shower. Right. That's it. <laughs> The outlaws charged like a tidal wave of sudden death, firing point blank at anything or anyone who stood between them and the road ahead. They swarmed around the sheriff's house, shouting warnings to the lawmen through the window. This is so you Wilson lay off us. Keep on your side of the water. This town will get worse than tonight's raid. This is just a warning, Sheriff Wilson. There's no around that rock for you, Wilson. Hey, folks, look from here. Two horses and a redskin. <laughs> Unable to resist the mob, Tonto was quickly roped and dragged from the saddle of his paint horse. Silver and Scout were literally dragged away from Sheriff Wilson's house as the gang moved swiftly on. Oh, my sakes alive, Vern. It's a lone ranger that was shot. No. Is that right? Yeah, it's the truth. You better light the lamp so we can see how bad he's hurt. Oh, I'll get to it right away. And that engine friend of his. I heard him take him along. No telling what they'll do to him. And the horses. Silver. Sheriff, did they get Silver? Yeah, they did. Oh, here's the lamp. Now, let me take a look at him. Yeah, I expect he'll wish he's dead when he hears about his Indian friend and his oh, horse. I heard that redskin fight like a banshee wildcat before they got him. Yeah. Yeah, the Lone Ranger's alive, breathing pretty steady. Oh, good, that wound. Scott's in his shoulder. Well, it might have been worse. He knocked him down. He hit his head when he fell. Well, that's what knocked him out, hitting his head when he fell. Vern, get that water basin and some of them clean Sunday shirts in my dresser drawer. I'll clean out the wound. All right. I reckon if we wanted to, we could take that mask off and see what the face the Lone Ranger is like, couldn't we? You stop that kind of talk. Anyone that's do that, he should have his neck stretched. Well, thunderation, Sheriff. I wouldn't. I was only thinking. Well, I guess this shirt's the cleanest one. Put that basin on the floor beside me. Uh -huh. That's it. Sheriff Wilson, our house is burned down. The poor store was robbed, and you're to blame for it. Oh, what's hey, shut that door, Jeannie. Well, who, who's that? It's the Lone Ranger. So you found him. Well, I hope you're satisfied. Everyone tried to warn you. Warn me? Oh, here, get some water boiling. Vern, you build up the fire. Gee, yeah. get some clean water and a kettle. They told you what Murdoch would do to the town if you insisted on trying to get the Lone Ranger to come here and fight his organization. Well, the Lone Ranger is here. Yes, and he looks as if he's going to fight. Stretched out flat on his back on the floor. He's still alive. Well, even if he wasn't wounded, there isn't anything he could do. All you've accomplished is to bring Murdoch here with the worst raid any town has had. Gene, maybe you'd like it better if we just let that gang run things the way they want. Steal and kill and plunder to suit themselves. Well, at least we'd have had our home and Paul would have had his store. Yeah, but we'd have had our heads down with shame when we thought of the men that'd given their lives to win us freedom. Well, the water will be hot in a jiffy now. Gene, you go on home if you're going to talk bowing down to the Murdoch gang. Uh, uh. He's coming too now, Sheriff. Yeah, there now. You take it easy till you get your wits together. Don't try to get up too soon. Oh, Wilson. It was Murdoch and his gang. They attacked the town because they heard that I was looking for you to fight against them. So you're to blame for everything that's happened. Now, Gene, you shush up. Go on home to your pa. Go on, scat. I won't. That masked man ought to know what's happened. Buildings burned, lots of people robbed, and half a dozen murdered. And all because he's lined up against the gang. I, I'm sorry. Sorry? <laughs> now I suppose you're going to make some big, brave sound and statement of going after that gang, of fighting until the last man in town has been wiped out like... Like the Alamo. No, we won't fight until the last man in town is wiped out. What? We'll fight until the last outlaw is where he belongs. It took two days for the Lone Ranger to recover his strength. On the morning of the third day, Gene called at Sheriff Wilson's house with a bowl of steaming broth. I'll see if the broth is taken to the bedroom for him, Gene. But when can I see him? I, I want to tell him how ashamed I am for what I said the other night. Nope. You can't let no one talk to him, Gene. Well, Maybe tomorrow? Well, maybe. We'll see. But, Sheriff, yesterday you said I could see him today. I'm taking orders from the Lone Ranger, Gene. That's all I can say. He won't talk to anyone. Well, well is he still angry? Well, he wasn't angry at all, Gene. He's just hard hit at losing Tano and Silver, and he's bound and determined to get that gang. Well, here's a chicken I broiled for him. Well, I'll see that it don't go to waste. Yeah, thanks, Gene. Can I see him tomorrow? I don't know. Well, if I can't, then... Well, tell him I, I'd do anything to take back what I said. Yep. And I'll stop in tomorrow, right after church meeting. Yeah, I'll be here. The next day, Sunday, Jean came to the house of the sheriff, accompanied by Vern, her father, and several men of the town. They entered the small house as a committee and... Sheriff, we don't want to do anything that the Lone Ranger'd be against. But we all want him to know that he can call on us for whatever he wants. Well, I guess he'd be glad to hear that. These men insisted on coming with me, Sheriff Wilson. I see. We, uh, that is, 
We need a leader, Sheriff. Someone that would direct a fight against the outlaw island. Yep. Now, uh, how long do you think before it'll be the Lone Ranger can go into action? Well, I couldn't say, Vern. Uh, you've been mighty secret about him, Wilson. Now, let Vern, me... Vern, Gene, all the rest of you. I reckon the Lone Ranger figured that he didn't want your help. The truth can be told now. I'll invite you to help yourself to a look in the bedroom. There's been no one there for these past three days. <laughs> yep, the masked man slipped away from here at night. No one around here knew about it. What's he going to do? Oh, he didn't tell me. Is he going against that gang single-handed? I don't know, but you can bet your boots he's going after him. They captured his Indian friend, and believe me, he's going to make them sorry they did it. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the long, narrow island, Butch Murdoch kept Tonto tied and closely guarded. Each day, he went to the Indian with questions. I want to know what the Lone Ranger's plan to do. Me never tell. There's no way the men in town can drive me away from here. There's no law can touch me here. How's that mask, hombre, figuring on getting at me? Me not tell. Now, look here, Redskin. I've wasted plenty of time with you, more time than I should have. I'm going to find ways to make you tug. Huh. Uh, so you don't scare easy, eh? Huh? Me not afraid of anything you do. That's who you're mistaken. What you mean? Maybe you don't fear what I could do to you. But how about to the finest horses that ever breed? Pete! Bag them horses over here. The captured one? Sure, the white and the paint horse. Come and ride around. What you do? <laughs> you're down that worried, eh? Huh? Come on, catch him here. What's the matter? Can't you handle him? Get along there. Come on with you. Get up there. Hello, Pete. Let him stand. You not hurt, Silver. And you leave Scout alone. What would you do, Redskin, to save the lives of these two horses? What you want? I want to know what the plans of the Lone Ranger are. How does he plan to move against my stronghold? Tonto not no plan. No, you don't, eh? Me not know what Lone Ranger plan. Then you'd better start figuring out what he's likely to do. You see that sun shining in the west? Uh-huh. Me see. When that sun dips under the horizon today, I'm going to put bullets through the heads of those two horses. That is, unless you get some notions in the meantime. Lone Ranger, not tell Tonto plan. Me not know plan. How me tell plan to you? Now listen, Redskin. The Lone Ranger will find some scheme for driving us off this island. I don't know what it'll be, but he'll find something. You traveled with him long enough to have a pretty fair idea what that scheme will be. You think it over between now and sunset if you don't want to see two good horses at your feet. Golly, Butch, it seems a shame to kill the white stallion. We won't hesitate, though. The horse is no good to us. No one could ever gentle the critter. It's a one-man horse. I'll keep an eye on the Indian. I'll be back around sundown. Well, Santo, it sure would be a shame to see those horses shot. Me not know what plan to be. Well, I can tell you this. Butch Murdoch wasn't fooling. He meant just what he said. Where, Lone Ranger, now? Last we heard, he was still getting over being shot in the sheriff's place. Now, he's scheming something, and we got to know what it is. Now, you better figure it out. And I sure hope you do, because I'd hate to have to shoot horses like them, too. Yes, sirree. I sure would hate to do it. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Some distance south of the Rio Grande, 
a Spanish gentleman maintained one of the largest, finest ranches in the entire region. His name was Don Rafael Gonzalez. His wife, Senora Maria Gonzalez, came into the patio during the siesta hour with excitement in every word and movement. Rafael! Rafael! You come quickly in the house. Maria, what is wrong? The sword. The sword of your grandfather. He's gone from the wall. The sword? Santa Maria! Yeah, a moment ago, I'm in the house. I look. The sword no longer is on the wall where it was placed. For this, I will punish someone. I don't I will... know how long it has been gone. Only wait, I will find... Don Rafael. Oh. Must. Who is it who come? Yes, Don Raphael is your sword. He is the one. He it is who took it. Wait, senor. There was a time when this sword was worn at the side of the governor of Texas. It is true. For that now, reason... Now, Texas I... needs another man from the family of Gonzales. Will you wear this sword? I? Texas? Senor of the mask, I, I came here on a horse that was borrowed. I forded the stream far up where it's shallow. And where there's but little current... My own horse has been stolen. Because of this, you come here to take that sword? I come because I was told that if I ever was needed for this sword to be carried again, the request had only to be made. Here, read what's inscribed on the sword. But you, the mask. They call me the Lone Ranger. Oh, so that is it. Your horse, Silver, is not here. I told you that my... Soledad Ranchero. The Lone Ranger. Raffaele said his horse was stolen. Senor... How is it possible for me to serve? There's an island between our countries. That island of the lizards, that spawn of all to this evil. A wood could be blown into nothing. And you know the kind of men who live there? Know them. Senor, I curse them daily. I pray for their painful death. They've been I... raiding towns in Texas. And in Mexico. And they are immune. There is no law, no man who can attack them. They live where there is no government. And they can defeat any who try to go after them. Many of our friends have suffered because of this outlaw. Have your friends tried to drive them from their island? Oh, yes, and so dearly they have paid. There was a time when twenty of us plunged into the water with our horses. But before we could get halfway to the island, most of us had been killed, and the others forced to swim with their wounds back to our own side. That's why I came to you. But why? We need more than men to drive these outlaws from the island. We must act at once. But, senor, how, how can it be done? Will you wear the sword? If wearing it will help. You and many others near here in Mexico have cattle. Cattle? Cattle, senor. You breed bulls for the ring. And in all of Mexico, there are none finer. More stronger. Or more dangerous. How many such bulls can be herded? I do not know, amigo. Perhaps several hundred. But these bulls, what can they do? If those bulls would be driven into the river, where the current is swift and the water is deep, they would be swept along on the current. Yes? They would try to go ashore at the nearest point. They do not like the water. If the current took them near that island... Then the outlaws on the island would have a fortune in priceless bulls. That, Don Raphael, is what we must prevent. But I do not understand. That island is too small for both outlaws and wild bulls. The bulls are infuriated. Yes, senor. Raphael, perhaps the bulls could do what men cannot do. If we could enlist the help of your friends and the help of my friends in Texas... With the law ready to make a rest when the outlaws try to go ashore on the mainland? The bulls draw them from the island would be good, would... Senor, as I have said, the bulls would be lost. Perhaps not. Will you let us take the chance? Senor, I think I know what you have in mind. You hope to stampede the bulls? Perhaps. Oh, it will not work, amigo. I'm sorry. Why? Oh, no. You may understand the long horns of Texas, but the Spanish bulls with generations of breeding for the bull ring, they are different. They do not stampede from fear as do your Texas beasts. Ah, oh, senor, it's too bad. You count so much on the help of Don Rafael, and now you're so disappointed. Don Rafael, I'm going to that island. You? Tonto is there. He's my friend. Silver's there, my horse. I'm going to be there with him, and I'm going to count on the help I came to get from you. I tried to tell you it is all, please. Perhaps I understand your fighting bulls better than you think I do. the hour of sundown drew near, Murdoch came to Tonto, who had his dark eyes fixed on the red rim that still showed on the horizon. Scout and Silver were tethered close at hand, and Pete stood with a heavy rifle in his hands. Well, Redskin, you see the sun up there? She's almost gone. Ah, uh, me see it. Well, have you figured out how that mask friend of yours is going to fight me? Me not know. Well, that's too bad. Ain't it, Pete? Uh, Murdoch, I wonder... Get your gun if... ready. Well, doggone well, it. I have to I... do the shoot myself. You'll be the first to get it. Oh, I'm ready. Murdoch. Well, see it fast. The sun's most gone. You let horse live. 
Me teach horse to let you ride them. Yep. There's only one thing I want. That's no to ski but... Murdoch, the men have got something. They're coming here and they're mighty excited. I got his. Hey, boss, look at what we got. Yeah, what? A mess, man. It's the mess, man. And you come here? Tai Kimosabe. You got wound. How bad? It's not bad. Otto, what have they done to you? Me, all right. But fellow ready to shoot Silver. Silver, old fella. Thank goodness you're alive. <laughs> There now, steady, steady boy. Where'd you get this critter? At the head of the island. He was trying to make sure, but the current caught him and the gray Mustang he was aboard and washed him right to the island. <laughs> Reckon he sure was surprised to find out where he was landing. <laughs> <laughs> this is better than I hoped for. Well, now that you've got me, Murdoch, what are you going to do about it? Hold on. This man's no fool. Thanks. What do you mean? Dirk, he knows the Rio as well as any man alive. He'd know what the current would do. How about that? You're doing the guessing. You never tried to cross me washed up here unless you wanted that to happen. Murdoch is right. The Lone Ranger know that he could cross upstream where it's shallow. What about it? Well, what about it? You wanted to come here, didn't you? I was anxious to know about Toto and our horses. Murdoch, if you'd harmed my friends, you'd pay for it with your life. Yeah. So that's why he come here. How'd you figure on getting away again? I've got nothing to say. Where'd you come before, Dark? When you could have come after Dark with a better chance of not being seen. I didn't think you'd sleep without a guard, so it didn't matter when I came. There's something up your sleeve, and I'm going to know what it is. How are you going to find out? I've got a way. Pete, you ready? Yep. If you'd been a few minutes later, you'd have found two dead horses here. What's that? Not right. Him ready to shoot scout, shoot silver. Why, you... What have those animals done to you? Throwed him on his face, for one thing. <laughs> Shut up. I'm sorry, boss. Maybe you'd sooner see your horses shot than tell what your plans are. And then again, maybe not. Let's we'll see. Cock that gun, Pete. Why'd you come here? To see Tonto. How are you planning to trap me? I didn't say I was. Never mind beating around the bush. I want straight answers and I want a pronto. What's your scheme? Him shoot silver, shoot scout. All right, Murdoch. Put that gun away. You win. Keep that gun ready, Pete. And if he slows up in his talk, I'll give you the word to fire. And shoot the white horse first. The plan, Murdoch, is to stampede you from this island. Do what? Stampede? What's he mean? Well, some ranchers are planning to drive cattle into the river. The cattle will be caught by the current and washed to this island. Same as you was, eh? Yes. And your friends figured to come behind the critters and start shooting at him to stampede them. The... The plan was to drive your men from the island. I sure got to hand it to you. It's your plan, of course. Yes, I helped make it. <laughs> I told you, Pete. I told you to have something slick in mind. <laughs> but now we know what it is, we'll be ready. How about us letting the critters land? Well, we thought you wouldn't shoot good beef. You'd be glad to see it coming here. Slick. Downright slick. But now we'll turn the tables. They'll turn the tables of plenty. What about these horses? Leave them for the time being. Rope the Lone Ranger. I thought we'd let cattle come. We'll open fire when it gets ashore and, and turn it right back into the water. It'll stampede right back at the men who are falling behind it. But boss, I hear something. Right, get the rope around that tree. And let's get to the head of the island. Round up all the boys. All right, come on, boys, and bring your gun. Come on. Hey, that'll hold you. Aren't you going to take off my mask? Plenty of time for that. I want to be in on the fun. We'll see you by and by. Now, scheme all go wrong. Not yet, Tonto. Here, I'll have these ropes cut in no time. You got knife? A blade of a knife up my sleeve. <laughs> there, I'll cut your rope. Uh, what about mask? What if they did unmask you? I disguised myself beneath the mask, just in case. <laughs> there you are. Now get your horse. Here, Scout. I don't know what I'd have done if I'd have shot these horses. Steady, boy. We'll be traveling in a minute. Tonto, those aren't Texas tears that are coming here. No? No, they're from Don Rafael. They're bred for the bull ring. Oh, them plenty dangerous. They're killers, man killers, every one of them. And they will stampede away from gunfire. Now, what them do? Wait and you'll see. Murdoch's gang is due for the surprise of a lifetime. Now they're shooting, trying to turn the bulls back. Right about now, they have a lot of mad bulls at the head of this island. As the first bulls scrambled ashore, the outlaw band began firing. Much to their dismay, the bulls lowered huge shaggy heads and charged. Shoot them! Stop them! They're coming for us! They don't turn back! What They're fighting, they? killing men! Hundreds of fighting bulls made shore. There was a black mass of them, the water still coming. Murdoch turned and ran. Get back! Get away from them! Save your lives! The rest of his men raised with him. They leaped to their horses and the retreat became a rout. 
Hello, it's worked. Those bulls charge toward, not away from men who fighting them. Listen to the outlaws come. Uh, they never live on island now. Come on, get on, Scout. Uh, you ready? Steady, big fella. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Riding ahead of the outlaws, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached the foot of the island and plunged into the river. A hundred yards behind them, Murdoch and his gang had no choice. The water! Hit the water! We'll be trapped if we don't. Watch out! Either one! Better take a chance on the mainland! Murdoch went to Texas. Pete and many others followed him. Others of the gang headed for the other shore, the shore of the Republic of Mexico. It didn't matter. Lawmen were both places, waiting with grins on their faces and loaded guns in their hands as the killers came out of the water. Take their guns, men, and put ropes on them. The Lone Ranger worked it out just right. Look over there in Mexico. All right, all right, Wilson. I'd sooner take a chance on standing trial and get killed by those bulls. And it didn't matter whether you come here or Mexico. Don Rafael and his men would hang you just as quick as we will. Now it's all clear. And to think the Lone Ranger planned it this way. I reckon one Lone Ranger against two score of crooks like you is downright unfair odds. But he had one arm hindered by a wound in the shoulder. So that should have evened it up a little. <laughs> Boys, a Lone Ranger done this one one-handed. <laughs> just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>